What's going on guys? So cold here in Florida. And, uh, let's see. Let's take a look at the thermometer here. 40 degrees. That's too cold for me. 150% humidity. It's wet. It's damp. It's out there raining. So if it got cold again now, it might snow. I heard it snowed yesterday in North Florida. Up in the panhandle. So but anyway, we got a delivery to make, and I uh, had some questions on the Segola off the uh, video that I did yesterday. So I was gonna break that Segola down for you. Some guys wanted to see the inside of it, and then uh, Mike Menke said that uh, he wondered if the gun would wear without having packings in it to wear. And uh, the packings in the gun are usually just a seal. You know, they're, they're uh, not supposedly a wear item. Uh, the seal disintegrates from cleaning the gun, from putting it in the gun washer and exposing it to chemicals over time. The seal, you know, shrinks up and gets smaller. And eventually the gun starts spraying funny and then you have to put new packings in it. Uh, the Segola is uh, built to tolerance. There's no packings. Uh, this Segola that we're fixing to open up is about, uh, I want to say it's right about two and a half years old. And, uh, I haven't seen any signs of wear on it yet. It's all stainless steel construction inside as far as the metal parts. And uh, the only wear that I'm seeing on the gun so far is the handle, the trigger has got a little wear, but the uh, anodizing isn't coming off the gun body and uh, none of the chrome's wearing off like my Develis's do. And uh, it's from what I understand, the, the, the aluminum body is hard anodized and uh, the steel components are stainless steel so it's compatible with the water-based systems. But uh, we'll go ahead and break that down, take a look at that. And uh, you guys, I don't get paid by Matrix to uh, you know push Matrix. It's just something that, uh, it's a product that I think works pretty good. And uh, with today's economy, uh, you know, I've gone into shops that are spraying Dymont and uh, PPG and DuPont and uh, put the Matrix system in and uh, they've saved as much as 40 to 46 percent on the material cost uh, which is huge in today's market so uh, some of the guys had mentioned that uh, the bigger paint companies help you out getting boosts and buying cars and stuff for your shop and matrix has those same programs too uh, you know that's a nothing's for free you know you have to sit down with an account manager and uh, you forecast what your business is going to do you know what you think you're going to what your annual income is going to be and uh, they give you your perks based off that uh, what your estimated target number is that you're going to spend and if you fall short on that number then you know you have to pay that money back that's how that works a lot of people don't know that so if you're a shop and you find yourself in a slump or you know you find yourself not able to get work in the shop it can cost you uh quite a bit of money at the end of the year to honor those contracts so uh just uh the small shops especially the small shops around here uh they're not necessarily small they might have four or five guys working at them mom and pop type shops are what we have uh, i don't service any nationwide accounts or anything because there's logistic issues with uh working with other dealers and a lot of times when I push Matrix and you're not in my area, you know, I'm contacting the uh, Matrix people in Detroit and they're sending the sales rep out to you to do the uh, presentation. And I make nothing at all off that other than the satisfaction knowing that I pass a product on that's uh, a good value. And uh, I think if you put it in your hands and use it, uh, it's, a, it's a pretty good system all around and they're good people to work with. But I'm not paid by them. I do sell their product and uh, we do have permission to use their product on my uh, channel. So in exchange for that, you know, I do uh, show some stuff that I do with the Matrix. I've been using it for a long time and uh, I've been involved with Matrix since the early 80s in one way or another, whether, whether it be selling it or spraying it. And, uh, you know, being a painter for as long as I was a painter, I was, you know, Fortunate enough to use a lot of different systems, Dymont, Sickens, uh, DuPont, Standox, you name it, I've sprayed it. And I realized that the market's changing, you know, into the uh, the green market. And uh, it's pretty expensive to change over to go green. You guys got shops, you know that. But, uh, you know, call your local dealer or contact me if you want to try it, you know, give it a test drive, let them come by and talk to you. And uh, you don't just don't close your eyes to it, you know. Uh, it's a it's a it's a good it's a good tool to have in your shop if you're a, a you know shop owner 
But anyway, uh, let me get to the gun. Take that apart. Put you on the stand here so you're not all shaky. Because a lot of you guys hate that shaky cam stuff. I'm going to try to get you moved in a little closer here. I'm scraping my car up. The things I do. Needs a paint job anyway. So anyway. Let me loosen that up. We're going to zoom in a little bit. We're going to zoom in. There we go. It looks pretty good. Let me uh, break it down. So it's got a fairly big uh, fluid tip on it. And, uh, you know, it's uh, pretty basic. Uh, comes apart like any other gun, except there's less stuff. That's pretty much it. You know, you can pull the back out if you want, and you can pull this out if you want. But, uh, <clears throat> I don't know if you'll be able to see down in there or not. But that baby's got absolutely no, uh, no wear at all. And uh, none of the anodizing's moved or uh, anything. Stays pretty clean in there. And uh, that's the gun body. It's got a flared tip at the bottom that it seals on. You see that flare at the bottom and then it has a, a washer here. But there's no seals, no uh, no nylon to swell or any of that stuff. Uh, so this is the 44 Extreme. Uh, they don't make these anymore, now they have the 4500. And, uh, but give these a try. I wanna say these were, uh, I don't even know how much they were at this point, but uh, half the price is a Sokolo or a Sada and uh, I think they spray pretty good I haven't had anybody that's been disappointed with these and there's a couple guys on the tubes that have body shops over in Brazil I think or over in uh, not our country that are spraying with the Sokolos and they're laying out some fantastic paint jobs so uh, Roberto over there he's a uh, kick ass he's the Sokolo guy and uh, he's the only other painter I've ever seen that Actually sprays on uh, YouTube with one other than the guys that I've sold be bug and sprayed his car with one And I know Tom's wonderful world has one also And there's a couple other guys that have them too, but uh Yeah, I haven't seen anywhere, uh, you know, it's got a little dirt on the needle right there I usually just hit that with some red scotch bright and it'll clean right up But uh, the needle stainless uh, the spring saw stainless And everything else is hard anodized even these uh Aluminum knobs and stuff that look silver. This is a hard anodizing on them and I uh, haven't seen any wear at all in the knobs The only wear on this gun so far is uh, the trigger and uh, You know you get that it's got a little bit of a Plating issue there and you know it gets used a lot so But uh, yeah, it's got the regulator at the bottom here So you can just you know plug it straight into the wall and you can regulate it at the gun if you want a little fine-tuning adjustment and then regulate at the wall so you don't have to use a regulator there. And uh, I was bitching about the cup on this gun, but most of you guys that are in shops are gonna go to a PPS cup or you know something like that. So you wouldn't use the plastic cup anyway. And uh, that's the one thing that I don't like about the gun is the cup. You know, the cup's sort of cheesy. Uh, it is clean inside. You guys can see the outside of it. This, this is just the... Uh, clear starts bonding to the plastic and it's hard to get off. I can clean it, but uh, you know, it's gonna be a, uh, I think I'm just gonna buy a new cup. The one modification that I did do, it has a, a drip valve on the top and me and Tom both took cars out and it just has the hole. If this hole gets restricted or plugged up, the gun won't spray. Uh, that's like any gun, but it seems to be more critical on this one. Trash or the vents plugged, it's a problem. Here's my uh, <clears throat> GTI Plus, and it's seen a lot of uses, as you can see. The plating's wearing off of it, and uh, this gun is a little older. This gun's about two years older than the uh, Sukola, so uh, this gun's been abused. It's time for a new lid, when they don't fit like that when you don't use them for a while. So, uh, <clears throat> I don't really like these lids. They always make me nervous when you're going over the top of the car, so, you know. Uh, PPS cups probably the way to go 
you know it gives you the ability to spray upside down you can get the rockers a little better and uh, if you're going to be painting for a living the PPS system is probably you know what you want to look into and it gives you an easy way to store your paint too although I, I never liked the look of the PPS cup and uh, you can run into some issues with not being labeled up on the PPS cup too if uh, they come into your shop I worked at a dealership and uh, I'm sort of, uh, you know, not a shop, you know, we're a store, we sell paint out of here, and the paint leaves here, but uh, if you're a shop and you have uh, no labels on your can, it's a $10,000 fine, $10, fine per can. So every paint can that you have in your uh, cabinet that looks like this, this would be considered a $10,000 fine, uh, because it has no... Uh, material data safety information on the label which is required by law so if you have a shop make sure your cans are labeled properly that you have a paint label on there because that can get pretty expensive I worked at a dealership that got shut down over that <clears throat> so we had a, a mixing system and we went from a mixing system to PPG factory uh, packs and that's back when I used to spray uh, DBU so uh, any of you guys that have uh, been around for a while spraying Deltron. DBU used to be the early base coat that used to be catalyzed. You have to put a hardener in it. And uh, then they came out with the DBC. And the DBC is much more friendly. It stays on the shelf longer. And uh, all that good stuff that you guys know about already. But anyway, there's the breakdown of the Sokola. Uh, you know, it's a really good gun. You guys should give it a try. I know painters, uh, they spend a lot of money on guns, so it's, it's not much of an investment. If you're in a painter situation, you know, to buy one of those and uh, do yourself a favor and get one, put it in your hand. I think you'd be impressed. I used to uh, have one that I loaned out, but I don't do that anymore. So I apologize about that, but I'm sure, you know, if you're interested in Sokol, I can definitely hook you up with a dealer in your area and have them come by and uh, do a little demo for you. So there's a, you know what I mean? Put it in your hand give it a try so we're putting a little order together got to make a delivery shaker out there and uh gotta drive to orlando so i'm gonna do that while it's rainy and cold and crappy and then we got the 24 hours of daytona this weekend i'm gonna go check that out the rolex race i like that kind i like going over there and checking those cars out something about uh cars that run for 24 hours mistakes always happen those guys always get tired to start crashing stuff at about three or four o'clock in the morning but uh it's supposed to be cold here i don't know if it's supposed to be rainy but uh i don't like the rainy kind so we're hoping that the rain stops and uh we can get out to the track and uh you know stay dry but uh i'll take the camera if i go out there tonight and uh, get you some shots and uh it's pretty cool i get the big uh ferris wheel set up so it's like a circus and uh they'll have the bruno porsche guys there so we'll go over there and check them out they always party hard got the big bus there from atlanta so we'll go check that out and uh yeah i gotta clean my shop it's a mess i got the uh hemi there i gotta put that back in i put the rear main seal in yesterday that's a quite the piece there you can't just buy the seal it comes with that whole aluminum uh housing it's a part of the back of the block there sort of like an ls motor very similar in design me and my neighbor were talking about that and then i got a little uh head job he brought over i gotta do this it's a mitsubishi turbo gallant when is it gallant no it's a uh what are those things i don't know it's all some sort of mitsubishi anyway turbo eclipse or something not an eclipse is that what it's called i don't know but it's got 12 bad guides there. There you see a little pencil mark there. The valve guides are cracked. So I'll do a little video on that. We're gonna core drill the valve guides. And what I mean by core drill, we'll tap the top of the guide. Mm -hmm. We'll actually uh, run a tap in the top and we'll thread it. We'll put a bolt in the part that's exposed on the top here. And then we'll run a drill bit through the bottom and core drill the guide. To where the wall thickness is reduced 
and then we'll take a driver and drive them out on the bolt that we thread into the top and uh, that's the way you get the guides out without damaging the head uh, it relieves some of the pressure off the guide when you core drill it and make it thinner the guide collapses on itself as you're pushing it out so uh, that's the best way to do that and not compromise the material around the guide so uh we got to put those 12 valve guides in there that are cracked i got to pick those up we'll do this start this monday and then we're going to do a valve job <clears throat> it had a really nice valve job on it sweet ass valve job on there but uh we're going to go ahead and uh do the valve job and we're going to do a little port work to this and get some ferrea valves some stainless steel valves and some new springs because the guy wants to uh put a little more uh, camshaft in it so we're going to take care of all that get the installed heights all set up and uh cc the combustion chambers and uh get everything flowing really good on this one this is a pretty nice head these are uh pretty decent pretty decent little motors here they uh do have some issues but they do make some really nice power this is uh you know so this should be a fun project We'll follow him out to the track and see how it runs. But uh, yeah, anyway, that's what's going on here. So let me throw this stuff together. I'll give you a shot of the uh, non-John Kerry conditions today. There we go, we got a little blue, a little blue peeking out, a little blue, not too bad. So it could turn out to be a good day. And uh, yeah, so I need to get back on the old blazer. I haven't touched it all week. I gotta get a thermostat and uh, oil and filter for that one and uh, get that out of here that guy needs that truck really bad and uh hans he hasn't done much to the uh, mustang i'm gonna get him to put the fender back on it today and uh can do some body work on that i get the tag on that now and uh, i gotta make it run a little better it runs like shit and uh the plan was to uh make one of them run take the other one apart it's gonna require some parts he wants to hop one up so We'll do some head work, put a cam in it, and a small turbo That's what we were talking about. I got a couple turbos in the cabinet there. Spares for the bug and some smaller ones for street stuff. But anyway, sort of cloudy, sort of crappy day. But uh, you guys make the best of it. I'm sure it's a lot nicer than some of you guys. I've seen uh, some of you guys are freezing your ass off. This cat, what are you doing? Hey, 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 hey. Been trying to keep them out of here because they like to uh, do bad stuff to my garage. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and turn this off because the camera's getting shaky and I'm starting to ramble. But you guys have a wonderful day and uh, push that record button. It is the weekend. <laughs>